Typical real man, tap and toe and heel man, hearts to steel man, three big baboons, simply real man, here's the deal man, real man. Right now, Nicholas Santa Maria is joining me via Skype, and he is co-author and co-composer of the Actors Playhouse smash hit "Real Men Sing Show Tunes and Play with Puppets." How you doing, Nicholas? I'm fine, Paul. How are you doing? I'm great. Can I call you Nick? Sure, call me Nick. <laughs> Pret pretend you're working with a bad razor. <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to talk to you because everybody around town is talking about the Actors Playhouse latest play, Real Men Sing Show Tunes, dot, 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 and Play With Puppets. So I wanted to talk to you, since you are co-author and co-composer of this, what this show means and what it's all about. Wow, that's a good question. I, I have to say right off the bat that when when some people hear this the title – they think, what, what is this? They're going to be men dressed as construction workers singing songs from Oklahoma, you know. <laughs> they do. <laughs> uh, but uh, that, is, that couldn't be f uh, farther from the truth. Um, it's actually a show about what it is to be a man in our society based on experiences of myself and my co-author, Paul Lewis. And uh, it all comes from from experiences we've had, thoughts we've had, and thoughts that we know other men have, but may not talk about or even come to grips with. So we've taken it in a very comical light, for the most part, and uh, we've exaggerated, put it on stage, added a few puppets, and it's turned out to be what people are telling me is a very, very entertaining evening. And what was the, what was the thought that made you sit down and put pen to paper to start this idea? Retirement. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, Polly and I started out together uh, working in children's television. Uh, Polly created a show back in the mid-90s called Jelly Bean Jungle, and it became syndicated. And he hired me as one of the characters, and we're both puppeteers. And in between takes, we used to do very adult, goofy material with the puppets to amuse ourselves and the people around us. And we always wanted to do something on an, with, you know, on an, on an adult basis, uh, utilizing our puppeteering skills. And we came up with this concept. We thought, you know, uh, uh, there are so many shows out there, so many musical reviews about the female experience. Right. Menopause, the musical, all of those things, or even just the dating experience or the cohabitating experience. Right. We decided to put together a musical, which is basically for men for men who don't like musicals and the women who love them. <laughs> it's so interesting because it? because I think when somebody says uh, musical or show tunes, they immediately get this sort of preconceived notion. And, oh, boy, it's, you know, it's not for me and, you know, hemming and hawing. But you sort of seem like this is going through a whole different angle. And you want the men to enjoy this knowing that they may not necessarily have wanted to come to see something like this, right? Well, let's face it, Paul. The, 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 um, men are dragged to theater <laughs> for the most part. Right. When a man has a night off. Their first thought isn't, wow, you know, I wonder if Lacage is in, in town, you know, or something like that. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. You know, their women drag them to the theater. So we wanted to write a show that was male friendly, meaning I guarantee if you're a man, I don't care if you're gay, straight or anything in between, you're going to relate to this show at some point in time. Uh, but the women and most of our customers have been women. Uh, get such a huge kick out of it because they're learning about their men. You know, I, I, there are some women that turn to me and say, you know, my God, I didn't know he was thinking this. So it's, it's something that both both sexes can enjoy equally, but it is geared toward the man who whose first choice wouldn't be musical theater. So can you tell us a little bit about the story of this review or show? 
And yeah, it's a musical review, but yeah. there's a, there's a there's a string. There's 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 a line. Um, our main character is played by um, local actor Steve Anthony, a, a wonderful, wonderful talent. And um, he plays a character who's having trouble facing up to his role as a man in society. And he goes to a therapist and the therapist gives him a 12 step program to follow, to get in touch with his manhood, basically. So the show follows this man's journey. And with each step you have, it could be one, two, three songs uh, based on the idea of that particular step. And it all leads up to where we all end up in old age, wondering what it was all about, basically. Uh, so that's basically what the show is about. Well, tell us some of the um, perhaps titles of some of the songs or some of the lyrics that might uh, – be funny or interesting oh my yeah <laughs> oh my some of them i can't mention I'm okay <laughs> this is public radio <laughs> yes it's oh it is public radio so i could say anything pretty much right <laughs> no <laughs> basically uh, some of the songs are uh, you'll 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 see the manly ballerinas of the prairie um <laughs> you'll see <laughs> you've got me already i'm with you see there you go i see that that's the hook um <laughs> There's there are songs basically about how men are perceived. Um, there's one a song about a guy who's very neat, uh, very emotional, very sensitive, but isn't gay. That's a different uh, take on things. There, that's it's a very different take, and we've gotten a lot of response on that. Um, there's a song. One of my favorites is called "Guy Talk." Now I don't know how you how you grew up. But Polly and I both had the same thing when we were growing up. We weren't crazy about sports. Uh, we were not. We didn't know about cars. Uh, you know, we didn't know about tools. What we knew about was being goofy and funny. Um, but we would invariably get into these conversations with other men about these things, and we would have to pretty much. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say the word. We would pretty much have to uh, wing it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I got you. And you know what I'm saying. Basically, you know a few facts here and there. You string it together like you know what you're talking about. So we have a whole number called Guy Talk about a guy who's not good at it. Um, there are numbers about, you know, what it's like to be married. Uh, there are some very sweet, sensitive uh, numbers as well um, about our fathers, about memories of family vacations, um, about, you know, being married to the same person for a long time. It's, it's just a very thoughtful yet very funny look at manhood. You know, it's interesting. It sounds like almost you're, you're also breaking some stereotypes too along the way indirectly, it seems like, because people do sort of associate, unfortunately, sometimes show tunes with uh, uh, gay or, you know, that sort of thing. But this sounds like, because you're talking about guys that are just guys, and they may not be, you know, the sports jock or this. So it sounds like you're, you're also kind of changing minds along the way. Absolutely. We're, we're pointing out the fact that there are all kinds of men out there. What it takes to be a man in this world, we ultimately come to uh, the fact that a man is basically a person who's very true to himself, true to what he is. And that's that's made very clear in the show. So in, in the final lyrics, uh, in the in the last song we sing, we have a line. Um, how does it go? Uh, uh, hats off to my fraternity of brothers, the gay, the straight, the guy who's not quite sure. You know, yeah. go croon and, or drive a truck like us. You're still a schmuck, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and that's really what it boils down to. Oh, my goodness. You've got me. You've got me. I'm there. <laughs> I've, I've got to come and see it. I know you've had a limited run here, and we're yeah. hoping, uh, you know, you've been getting a lot of reviews, and we're hoping people will come out to see it because, really, they shouldn't miss this. Is this the uh, premiere, the world yes, premiere? It's, it's the world premiere, actually. We have another – we have our West Coast premiere in April of 2013, and in between that, we're we're already in discussions uh, about New York and possibly London. Oh, that's terrific! And I well, the to... reviews have been uh, unanimous. We've had seven reviewers come see us. All seven are complete raves. They're love letters. And wh and what is the website where you do have all these great reviews so people can look at them? Oh, go see us on uh, realmensingshowtunes.com. 
And I wanted to get back for a moment to some of the people on the creative team around this. You mentioned your friend Paul, or yes, Paulie. Paul, Paul Lewis. And tell us a little bit about him and the others that uh, put this together. Well, well, Paul is, I, I, I call him the genius. Uh, he's, he's not only a wonderful songwriter and lyricist, but he's, he's a terrific singer, uh, a good comic. He's, he's, he's just, he's the all around performer. Um, we always banded together when I lived down here, I live in Los Angeles now, but I lived in South Florida for 12 years and Paulie and I were constantly up for the same roles because they wanted people who were versatile. And Polly, Polly to me is the most talented person I know. And he says the same thing about me. So we have a very, we have a very good relationship that way. Um, he's very funny in the show. Uh, and he's come up with some beautiful things, some beautiful songs. I have to say some of the, some of the ballads he came up with, especially are just, just beautiful. Um, but then again, some of the funny things he came up with will have you, uh, having to change maybe your underwear uh, once or <laughs> twice during the show. They're very funny. So we uh, set the scene. You said it's it's three people. Yes, three men. Three men. And is, is it a one-act uh, play? No, two acts. There's an intermission. Oh, interesting, because I was wondering, you know, usually there is a typical sort of big number that closes the first act type of uh, yeah. sh show. Are yeah, we Are yeah. we doing anything like that with this? Well, the show the shows um, uh, it, it comes to about a hundred minutes if you add the two acts together, and there's a I guess a fifteen minute intermission, so it's about a two hour evening. Um, no, we end on a high note with a very funny song. I have to say, the first act is much more frivolous and silly, and then the second act becomes a little more thoughtful, still funny, but a little more thoughtful, just like growing up. And do you have um, – what's the music? Is there a five-piece or what are we doing? We're working with just a piano. Manny Schwartzman is our, is our musical director. Oh, it's a very intimate kind of evening. It, yes. It's, it's in their upstairs theater. There's about 450 seats. Oh, it's right. a great, great comedy house. Oh, I love that upstairs theater. It is yeah, very – you're right there on the stage. Yeah. Oh, I prefer it. I prefer it to the downstairs theater. But um, – uh, we have Manny on the piano. When we do it in Los Angeles, we're going to be going to three pieces. We're going to add um, um, bass and drums. But uh, in the meantime, it's it's he makes a lot of music, Manny. He's very good. And Dave Arisco has just done the most amazing job putting this together. He directed it for you. Yes, and he is just he was the perfect choice. He is. He's had a he's had a remarkable run there at the Actors Playhouse and has done some wonderful things. He has that eye. I don't know what it is about David. He he sees things that others don't, and he can really put it together on stage. Oh, I, I went to school on him, watching him direct this production. He is just he's phenomenal. His 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 take on things. First of all, if they're not absolutely correct right up front, um, he soon proves himself right down the line. You know. Uh, and if he's not right, he's the first person to admit it and make the change. So he's he's the perfect director for this kind of show. The perfect director. Who knew <laughs> they existed? Who knew? <laughs> well, so the takeaway here is to put it in a thumbnail for people. They're going to come and uh, see some great theater, some new theater, some original music. This is all original stuff. All original. The story is a bit different than what you might expect, but yeah. it's a fun night for everybody. Great music, fun, comedy. I did want to talk about the puppets for just a second, too, because you mentioned you have a background doing children's programming with puppets, and it seems like puppets have made their way into um, musical theater off-Broadway, on-Broadway, and it's interesting to see it reflected here. Why do you think uh, puppets, do they sort of help break the ice? I think... Um, With the audience? Well, it's, it's funny. Puppets do sort of um, soften things in, in, in a way, if you will, um, in the sense that, you know, instead of, let's say, in a, one of the sketches, um, Polly is meeting a, a young lady for a date. So instead of one of us dressing up in drag, like a Monty Python sketch, uh, I'm working a very workable female puppet and it works beautifully uh in the um sense that uh how can i put this i, I remember edgar bergen the great ventriloquist saying that he loved being a ventriloquist because charlie mccarthy his dummy could say things that he could never say <laughs> and there's a lot of truth to that in with our show the puppets take the place of a lot of things that might not work if a human being was doing them 
we have some very impressive puppets. We have a lot of different kinds of puppetry in the show. Um, but I have to say that the puppets are an enhancement to the material uh, rather than the other way around. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I do. It's very interesting. I'm trying to imagine it, but I'll have to get down there and see it for sure. Please do, Paul. Please do. So the name of the piece is Real Men Sing Show Tunes, dot, 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 and Play With Puppets. It's running at the Actors Playhouse. And Nicholas Santamaria, co-author, co-composer, and he's in the program, is joining me via Skype. Nicholas, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Same here, Paul. Thank you so much. Typical real man, tap and toe and heel man, hearts to steel man. Simply real man, here's the deal man, real man.